Hello everybody and welcome! Today we're going to see if some of you were right and we can actually get the Saturn V replica in stock Kerbal Space Program 1.4.1 and the Making History expansion to ELO. Yes, we are going to send this nice little rocket to the uttermost edges of our system. While it ascends, let me tell you a bit uh, of what I had to do to make this work. Well, first of all, all of the fuel tanks are now full, which they weren't in my original uh, Saturn V replica for the Making History expansion. But in order for that to work, I had to add some engines. In the back of the first stage, which you just see dropped here, there are not five, but seven. F1 replica engines, meaning the E1 Mastodon. And as you can see here, we not only have five, but uh, I think it's nine of the J2 replicas, the I2 Skiff engines, on our second stage. So we can push all of that fuel out of the atmosphere. Okay, you can see me here circularizing around Kerbin. And then we had to wait a while for our transfer window to ELU. And we also encountered a nice little bug, because when I staged the fairings, of, as well as for the big fairing around the lander as uh, for the service module, for some reason Scatterer made everything black. So yeah, I'm not sure why that happened. Maybe it's a 1.4, 1.4, 4.1 thing. But yeah, this was a bit unpleasant. So, after some finagling with the maneuver nodes, I was able to get an encounter with Elu, and we were on our way there. Boom! So we still had some fuel in the second stage, which of course was not the case with the real Apollo mission. The real Apollo mission had to drop the second stage while still in atmosphere and circularize on the third stage, the one you can see here, the SIVB or S4B. Now. As you can see here, we have our ELO encounter and we're now just advancing through time and spending four years in space until we get there. Of course, this is highly unrealistic because if you uh, would spend four years cramped up in that tiny command module, you'd surely go crazy and also the entire rations will not last that long. Okay, we're here at Elu, and now we're doing our retrograde burn in order to slow down and circularize around this little icy rock. Okay, I'm going for a very eccentric orbit. Reason being that I then, as you can see here, want to change the inclination to get a really flat uh, plane. Okay, and we are still having fuel in our third stage. You can see how powerful that thing is. So yeah, the most powerful rocket in stock KSP? Probably? I don't know. Time to get rid of that, so we need to do our traditional uh, get the lander out of the rocket maneuver. I'm pretty sure there's an official name for that that NASA came up with, but I don't know it and I'm too lazy to look it up. Sorry about that. If you know it, comment it below. It would interest me if you knew how that maneuver is called. We're done here and now it's time to go to the surface. So we're extending our landing legs and then of course doing this descent. Problem was I was in a very high orbit. Comparably, it was 40 kilometers above the surface, and I kind of miscalculated my descent profile, resulting in this. Again! Yeah, it's been a while till we had to do one of those again things. Anyhow, so yeah, I reduced my orbit to about 20 kilometers above the surface of Ilu. And then things went a lot more smoothly, as you can see here. Well, isn't that nice? We got our Apollo-style lunar excursion module onto the surface of Elu. Look at that happy face! Yay! All right. Well, the ladder is a bit uh, misplaced, as it seems. 
but nevertheless Jebediah was able to get out of the capsule and perform his most important duty as on any mission, of course planting a flag. There we go. Thank you Jebediah for your services. We could not have sent a robot out there to plant the flag. Okay, now that's over with. Let's get back into that thing because there's not really much to do on planets. And I have to admit that is still one of my gripes I have with Coral Space Program. Because you can't really do anything on planets. And yeah, we've ascended now. And we're doing our ascent burn. This is looking good. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going for a higher app lab so that I can get a better home and transfer to a rendezvous with my command module. So yeah, this should do it. And then hi there guys, well guy, depending on what vehicle you're from. We're now going to dock and of course transfer our Kerbals over to our main vehicle. So right until now, I was a bit scared that I was not able to uh, fulfill the mission because I was not sure whether or not I would have enough Delta V to get back. So I used every ounce of fuel I had left in the moon module and also all of the reaction fuel because, well, I forgot the reaction control thrusters on the main ship for some reasons and I would not need the monopropellant Anyways, once I'm on my way back to Kerbin. You can see here another bug that the shroud for the command module is already in place or in place again, although I've staged it before. And you can see here we're getting our encounter with Kerbin, which we will reach once again in a few years. So yeah, I hope Kerbals have the capability to go into hibernation, otherwise this is going to get boring really quickly. Okay, once I was there I decided to do the brute force approach because I did not have enough Delta V to do an insertion burn. So I decided to try my luck with the heat shield of the capsule. Yeah, I kind of made the mistake to not orient it in a retrograde uh, orientation. Yeah, so you know what that means. Again. That's right, and once we had orientated the capsule in the right way, meaning retrograde, and we also had to uh, deactivate scatterer again due to some uh, more of that black screen bug, we punched into the atmosphere and the heat shield was <laughs> heating up a lot. I was actually a bit scared that this would ruin everything, but, well, even though we came from the possibly highest point in uh, the known Kerbal system, unless you have more planets installed, we still made a fine insertion, well not insertion, fine uh, error break maneuver in the atmosphere and we could engage our parachutes. That was a relief. So this meant that, yes, you can take your stock Saturn V that you build if you fill it up to the brim with fuel and add some more engines and then you can take it to Elo and you can get the crew back as well. So I'm not sure if the developers kind of calculated that to be this way, but it is once more proof that the Saturn V is the mightiest rocket around, even in Kerbal Space Program. And yeah, we're now waiting until this is going to touch down. And here we are almost there. Yeah, there we go. That was smooth. Look at that. After eight years, they're finally home. Uh, but they still don't want to get out. Oh, well, you can't have everything, can you? Well, that concludes this mission. Let's see what we come up next time when we once again enter the Shadow Zone.
If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Also, you can watch one of the two cool videos shown on the right. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.